that we've made, uh, for example, biodiversity and conservation an economical sustainable model. Currently, uh, it's about 6% of our GDP comes from ecotourism, which wow. provides jobs for people all around the country, and we are leveraging on the 5% of the biodiversity that we have in our territory to, to produce that, not only conservation, but making an economic model out of it. So that, that's going directly to, to scale. But then uh, when you mentioned the word hobby, it, it ring a bell on me because somehow I have just briefly Please. this discussion with my sister. My sister studied economics and she's a specialist on economics and biodiversity. Mm. And I want, we were talking about um, an anecdote for the Native Americans in Costa Rica, how they perceive the jaguar. The jaguar. The jaguar. Yeah. Because from the typical Occidental perspective, the, 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 the large feline, like lion, is the king of the jungle because he's on top of the, of the food, food chain. chain. Yeah. Mm. For Native Americans, the jaguar is important because it's at the end of the food chain. Mm -hmm. And that depends. And they, they have this saying that if you see a jaguar, it's because the whole chain, it's healthy. Mm -hmm. And that's what they represent. Yeah. Very interesting. I think that, ana like that analogy is what we need to use when we talk about biosphere yes. and humanity. Yeah. Our well-being, it's kind of depends on the well-being of the rest, because sometimes we do not see those services right. on water, yes. on soil, on oceans. We take those for granted. Um, and I believe that's part of the problem. We're not uh, tackling what we're doing to the, to the environment to preserve it. And we need to, as, the, as this analogy, the main problem, it's here. Yes. Yeah. It's how we perceive reality. We perceive that those are for granted or that we can live comfortably without the jaguar. Hmm. And I think that's the frame we need to, the narrative we need to change. Is there something we should all be looking out for that tells us, you know, the system's really working? Well, it's a, it's a tough one, but uh, I have to say Every country, I suppose, has their own jaguar, their own, you know, <laughs> uh, apex predator, whatever that, that could tell us that. I think we need to, 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 to leverage our, our goals in terms of, of protecting biosphere in, uh, in more profound narratives. It's not only about ethics, because it is about ethics, but we need to consolidate a narrative that builds upon the ethics of conservation, growth and well-being for the people, and, uh, and how we can, as a as humanity, not only catch up with all the legacy that we as a generation represent, but the key uh, that our generation represents for humanity. That's why, in the case of climate change, that narrative is so important because it's, for, it's really evident. In the, in the context of biodiversity, it's a bit more complex because the loss of biodiversity is so fast, but many people don't even know what we're losing. Mm -hmm. So I believe we need to work a lot on communication and narrative to inspire lots of people, not only to get to the enthusiast, as I believe many of the audiences, but to reach the, when we manage to reach those who are indifferent and touch their heart or touch their market, we'll get to, to more profound changes.